My entitled stepmother tried to destroy a baby shower by changing all of the decorations around to what she specifically wanted. But in the end, we get revenge and we get the last laugh. As we switched all of her horrible decorations around at the last second, completely shocking her and putting her in her place. Here's what happened. So my fiance Jane found out that she was pregnant back in June of 2021. And we announced it to all of our families in August. All of the names in this story are fake, by the way. At first, my stepmother was completely unable interested in our baby. Not that I expected much from that woman, whose actual reaction to our pregnancy announcement was to ask Jane if she was sure that it was mine, which is something even my dad yelled at her about. But she barely acknowledged the fact that we are expecting a baby. Instead, she was more interested in my stepbrother, who was also engaged, and would give her beautiful grandbaby soon. But you know what? I have no complaints. We do not want her involved, and we didn't even have to say anything in the first place. Planning our baby shower was complicated. Both me and Jane would have to work until the holidays, and I wanted to be involved. The due date was February 2022, so we decided on early January as the best period of time. We enlisted two people as planners, my sister, who we will call Laura, and Jane's best friend by the name of Nina. Me and Jane are mostly laid-back people. We didn't want a big party, nor did we want to spend too much money on it. We were saving for both our baby and the wedding, so we decided early on that the shower would be co-ed. It would also have to be indoors again in January and we settled on a guest list of about 25 people plus about a dozen kids. We came up with the idea of a pizza party. So me, Jane, and someone by the name of Luke who was my brother-in-law have had homemade pizza nights weekly since I moved in and we thought it would be fun to incorporate that into the shower. Nina even found an event venue with a pizza oven and Laura figured out ways to incorporate classic baby shower stuff into the theme. The resulting plans were awesome. You would make your own pizza, you would have non-alcoholic drinks, and plain bodysuits for the kids to customize. Nina and Laura mixed pizza decor with baby decor and found pizza-shaped sweets. It almost seemed messy, and I was surprised they made it work, but we loved it. Most of the planning was finished by the middle of November. Well, later that month, my stepbrother's fiance left him for her ex. They'd been together for four years at that point, and it was both sudden and traumatizing for him. He was absolutely devastated. My stepmother, then realized the grandkids she dreamed of would take longer to come than she had thought. So naturally, without her son's future children to obsess over, she moved over to mine. Suddenly, my stepmother went from aloof relative to excited grandma-to-be. Her Facebook posts were incredibly tacky, basically hamming it up as the future grandma of my kid. At first, we were too busy finishing things up at work, as well as getting ready for the holidays to worry about any of that. But it did not take long for her to start pestering us about planning the baby shower, as well as a gender reveal. We denied the possibility of a gender reveal. No offense to those who like them, but we really don't. Plus, we decided to wait until birth to find that out. My stepmother tried to get us to find out and tell her as some kind of Christmas present, but we definitely did not do that. We also denied her the baby shower. She told my father and he talked Laura into letting her help out with the plans. Laura was still living with them at the time, so she didn't have much of a choice. She called Lena and they met my stepmother for coffee. Though I wasn't there for that meeting, Laura told me what happened later. Before they could even mention their plans, my stepmother started talking about hers. According to Laura, she pulled a shockingly thick binder out, complete with the words, Oh Baby, on the cover, with colorful tabs and pieces of fabric poking out, all from her purse, and skipped to the shower section. It was short compared to the rest of the binder, but it was still very long, and it was all to describe her one and only baby shower project. Laura sent me pictures and oh boy, it was a mess. I'll give you this. It looked like the best baby shower you would ever see on Instagram. That being said, it also was barely functional and obviously very expensive. There were balloons, oversized teddy bears, giant alphabet blocks, and cringeworthy signs everywhere. My stepmother was going for pretty over cozy with uncomfortable chairs and some fancy food ideas that didn't even look edible. Most of them just had soft cheeses, which Jane could not eat. The color palette was just three different shades of pink with gold accents all over the place. Now, we would be fine with a pink shower if it at least tried to mix things up just a little bit. But my stepmother's pictures looked like Barbie had puked all over Hello Kitty's birthday party. When Nina tried to remind her that we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, my stepmother said, well, I just know that it's a girl. But as a spoiler alert, it wasn't. My stepmother also wanted an all-female child-free party with fancy caterers and alcohol. 
all. She had written down a guest suggestion list containing some of her closest friends. And on that list, my mom wasn't there and neither was Jane's mom. She also planned party games that no one had any interest in trying out. Basically, the only thing everyone could agree on was to hold the party indoors. Laura and Nina weren't given an opportunity to show her their plans until she was done. And once they could, they explained that while they could find a way to incorporate some of the stepmother's ideas, they had already settled on a pizza theme. She tried to protest, but Laura stated that it was kind of them to even offer that as the shower was a month away and we had already greenlit their plans. The stepmother even tried to call me just to try and get them to change their minds, but I just repeated their words back to her. My dad also found out that he couldn't come to the baby shower, so he didn't have a say in anything anymore. The holidays came around and the subject was dropped. My stepmother seemed to be okay with the pizza party idea and Nina managed to pair some of the pink decor that my stepmother wanted just to try and match it with the blue stuff and even added one of the huge teddy bears. Fast forward to a week before the shower and Jane was almost eight months pregnant. Everything had been bought and all the guests had been RSVP'd and pretty much everything was ready to go. The shower was set up at 7 o'clock p.m. but my stepmother offered to get to the venue earlier to prepare for everything. Now Laura agreed mostly because she knew that the stepmother would complain if she didn't get to do anything and the venue even let them drop off their decorations before the party. Me and Jane promised to get there at 6. Two days before the shower however, the venue called up Nina. They told her that my stepmother had stopped by to drop off large heavy boxes of what she called a little surprise for all of us. She informed them that she planned on showing up at 3.30pm to start setting up for the baby shower and they were calling to reinforce that the venue was only booked past 4pm since the stepmother almost threw a tantrum when they told her that. All the decor was still at Nina's place so she called Laura to check if they'd left anything with the stepmother. Thankfully my sister is both smart and used to this garbage so she drove to the venue the next day and asked to see the stepmother's boxes. She told me she wasn't even surprised at its contents when she opened them but she was still shocked at the stepmother's audacity. All of the boxes were filled with pink frilly decorations and some of them seemed to be the exact same items that the stepmother had initially shown Laura and Nina. The signs, the balloons, the placemats, everything. And it was right about then that Laura realized why the stepmother intended to get to the venue earlier. She was going to set up that baby shower that she had planned and pretty much force all of us to party in the Barbie nightmare hellscape. She called Nina to try and figure out what to do. Neither of them could come at 4 p.m. So it was almost inevitable for the stepmother to get her way. The most obvious solution though that they came up with was to throw everything away. But Laura had a better idea. That night, they called me and Jane. They said to me, so do you want to destroy a party in two hours? Laura got home and invited the stepmother to go to the salon with her, lying about having some kind of coupons or something like that. The stepmother agreed and they planned on going right after the stepmother was done preparing for the baby shower. At 4 p.m. the next day, the stepmother got to the venue. She was done setting things up by 5 o'clock and quickly left to meet Laura at the salon. Once they got together, Laura texted Nina that the coast was clear. And after that, me, Jane, and Nina got to work on the venue. And sure enough, my stepmother had prepared her party. And this place was so pink that it made all of us nauseous. For the next two hours, Laura distracted the stepmother at the salon while the three of us quickly took down every piece of decor that the stepmother had put up and replaced it with a pizza party stuff. We set up the activities. We made up the tables. We put every pink item we found back in my stepmother's stupid boxes. It was actually really fun too. We were done only minutes before the shower started. A handful of guests arrived before the stepmother did, so I barely saw her all night. Laura told me that when they got there, my stepmother's jaw dropped as she tried to make sense of what had happened to all her pink decor. My sister just smiled and whispered in her ear, nice try, and went to help Luke customize a bodysuit. Overall, the baby shower was everything that we had hoped for. Our friends were there, people had fun, and we had a ton of pizza. So I didn't really care that the stepmother spent the whole party literally sulking in the corner. At one point, Nina did catch her trying to put little pink bows on top of the cupcakes, but she quickly shut that down. I gave Laura and Nina full credit for saving the day. My stepmother's interest in our baby quickly passed after that. She stopped wearing her future grandma shirts, didn't come to see us at the hospital when he was born, and even refused to acknowledge that he was a boy until she met him a few weeks later. And up until we went no contact with her, she was a very loose definition of the word grandmother. And I couldn't be more grateful
grateful that my son will never know her. That is seriously hilarious. This stepmother seriously thought that she was being slick. Did she seriously think she could go in early and change everything about this baby shower to what she wanted? Like, what in the world is wrong with her? Why would you do that to someone else's baby shower? It kind of makes sense why this original poster went no contact with this lady. Because this behavior is so insane. If she wanted to be involved, she should have fallen in line with what they already planned months in advance. The original poster goes on to say that they've only ever had problems with this lady. So honestly, for the sake of your own son, I don't blame you for kicking her out of your life. She is clearly toxic and she doesn't actually care about you. She clearly only considers you as second best and she definitely doesn't care about that boy at all. So hopefully this lady stays out of your life completely because this lady seriously tried to destroy this baby shower and that is absolutely unacceptable. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. An entitled customer refuses to get served by a woman at a restaurant that I work at and even goes as far as to lie and claim that I was being rude to him. And this was all incredibly frustrating and so offensive. Here's what happened. So I've been in the service industry for nine years and I've dealt with all kinds of people, but this one really stuck with me. This happened a little over a year ago. So in my restaurant, we have a teamwork-based system where we greet each other's tables, run food for each other's tables, and clear off everybody else's tables. It's a great system and we all hold each other accountable. We're still responsible for our own sections and we don't have to tip pool. So we still keep the tips even if other servers help out. I got sat with a middle-aged couple and I saw them get greeted by a server. Once the server was getting their waters made, I told them I could take the waters to them. I went to drop them off and I did my whole spiel. Hello and welcome. My name is such and such and I will be taking care of you this evening. The man immediately was confused and said that they already had a server. This happens sometimes when we greet each other's tables, but I explained to them that the server by the name of Eric was getting them started with their drinks while I will be their main server. The man was very certain that Eric was his server, but eventually gave in when I kept explaining to them that Eric was helping me out. I walked off to give them a few moments to decide on their entrees, and I saw them talking to my manager from a distance. My manager came back and told me that he does not want to be served by me and insisted that Eric was a far better server than me. And this is with what little interaction he had with the both of us. He also told her that he would not take no for an answer and he would only be served by Eric since apparently I was very rude. Now, Eric had already been cut and was almost ready to leave, but my manager had him finish serving the table. He was mad that the guy didn't just keep me as their server and I was upset that someone would lie and call me rude. Later on, Eric finished with the table and they paid out. My manager asked if the guy paid with a card and Eric told her that he had. So my manager looked at the card and saw his full name. I asked what she was doing and she said that the way he was talking to her was really demeaning. She said he was surprised that she was a manager and asked if there was anyone else that he could talk to. She said that he had talked to her as if she was stupid and didn't know anything. She looked up his name and found his Facebook along with his business. We clicked on the website to his dentistry business and we followed what he was doing just for a little bit. We also noticed that there was one single review for his business, which is weird, but I guess not super uncommon. So we decided to click on it and see what it was all about. And it was a single one star review. It read, do not go here. I was very uncomfortable around this man as he tried to hide his blatant misogyny. We were shocked, but honestly, not that surprised. I guess it was the first time I was really around someone who actually hated women. At first, I was really upset because he made me feel like I did something wrong. But then I realized realized there was really nothing I could have done to make him like me. Even Eric said that during his service, the man did not let his significant other talk at all and would switch between calling her his girlfriend and his wife. I also can't imagine running a business where half of your clientele are women while still basically treating them all this way. That guy seriously sounds incredibly creepy. And I'm really surprised that the manager allowed this guy to stick around. Like first off, Eric was out the door. His shift was over and he was about to leave. But this manager decided to try and make him stay just to make this misogynistic customer happy. Like seriously, she should have told him to take a hike. You do not have to put up with that kind of behavior and honestly, I would just tell them to leave if I was in her shoes. And it's so annoying that he just lied about this lady and how she was being rude to him even though that's not true. So hopefully this guy never comes back and if he does and tries that again, hopefully the manager has some kind of backbone and they tell him to get lost. An entitled man-child demands a full refund after we won't allow his untrained dog into our breakfast room. And now after putting him in his place, I'm waiting for his bad review to pop up online about our hotel. Here's what happened. So this happened just this morning when I finished my
my shift as a night receptionist at a four-star family-style hotel. I had an encounter with an entitled man, his significant other, and their dog. They were on their way to the breakfast room, which leads past the front desk, where I informed them that dogs are not allowed in our breakfast room, and if they would kindly consider leaving the dog in the room or eating their breakfast in the lobby or even their room. I gave them some kind of option they could work with. And the reason why we don't let the dogs in the breakfast room is because it is fully carpeted. Now, this entitled guy is a butch dude. He's big, he has tattoos all over, and he pretty much immediately exploded on me, yelling at me by saying, you're a dog hotel. Of course my dog is allowed in there. I guess he thinks he's pretty intimidating. I explained that while we allow dogs on one floor of the hotel, as well as one of the restaurants, there are unfortunately multiple reasons for the no dog policy in our breakfast room, specifically because of allergies or phobias of the other guests, as well as food safety and then some. Usually we inform guests with dogs about this at check-in, and I apologize that it didn't happen this time, even though it probably did and he just didn't listen. I also explained that we are by no means a dog hotel and we do not advertise it as such. Well, as you could probably guess, he got really aggressive and yelled louder, disturbing every guest that was present. He demanded a full refund for his room and told me they would book a different hotel next time. He called me all these names and then some, but I just apologize again for their bad experience and while I understand that they will book somewhere else next time, a refund is not an option. And as you can probably guess, he did not like that answer in the slightest. By the way, the dog was long-haired. He was not on a leash and during our discussion, it was roaming around the hotel lobby, approaching other guests as well as barking. So this dog was by no means trained at all. So there was no way you could have it in a room with food and many strangers. This was definitely not a service dog. His significant other observed the whole thing from the lobby and did nothing to keep the dog under control, while her jerk of a boyfriend was absolutely rude to me and everybody else. I ended up informing my manager about the refund request, which I'm pretty sure will be denied, and got out of there as soon as possible. Now it's time for bed. I'm currently waiting to see that bad review pop up online just so I can have a good laugh about this ridiculous dude and his tiny man energy. Yeah, that guy thought he could get away with whatever he wants simply because he's big and has a bunch of tattoos. Like, no, that's not a dog hotel. They don't advertise as such. That's not how it works. And this guy should feel lucky that his dog was allowed in the hotel in the first place. A lot of places just don't let that slide at all. They don't have a specific hotel floor allowing that, so booking somewhere else probably won't be an option depending on where this place is. So I really just hate people like this. And it doesn't help that the dog is clearly not trained. They're walking around all over the breakfast room floor, they're coming up to strangers, they're barking, and no one's doing anything about it. So even if this dog was trained, it's evidence that this entitled guy's not going to take care of the dog at all. He's going to allow this behavior, and it's just going to escalate out of control. That's usually how these things work. So good for the original poster for standing their ground. They didn't allow this guy to walk all over him, and they took this negative attitude in stride. And honestly, when it comes to complaints and weird entitled customers like this, standing your ground really is the best thing to do that will shut them down. My best friend is in love with me, and I don't know what to do considering the fact that I now have another boyfriend, and I'm not sure how they are going to react. Here's what happened. So to start things out, we've been best friends for roughly two years now. It started off great. We get along really well, and we are just comfortable around each other. I was in a relationship in the beginning of our friendship, and eventually I broke up with the guy. Around the time that we broke up, my friend expressed that he had feelings for me. I explained that I didn't have those feelings in return, and this would be strictly a friendship between the two of us. He said he agreed, and off we went. Ever since that moment, I've been trying my best to set boundaries and stay away from anything that might have been a little bit too much of a relationship just to avoid giving him the wrong impression. For example, the only physical contact we have is a hug, and that's only when we first see each other, nothing more. If we go out, I don't let him pay for stuff, as well as anything else that would make it seem like we're a couple. I've been seeing a new guy, and it's been amazing so far. I really see this going somewhere, and I'm really worried that this relationship with my friend will give him the wrong impression. I don't do anything I'd be uncomfortable with if he did it with his female friends. I don't know what to do. I really value my friendship, but him liking me is getting to be a bit too much. I don't want to lose him as a friend since he is one of my only friends. What should I do? I can definitely see both sides of this. I can totally see that the original poster would be worried that her friendship with this guy friend would somehow seem weird to her new boyfriend. Like, I totally understand that anxiety, and I think you're right to be cautious about any kind of false narrative. 
have. Like, that's understandable in my opinion. But maybe the problem is, is that you don't have other friends. Maybe you should try to get other female friends in your life. That way, it'll be less sketchy and you can have more people around you than just this one guy who clearly has a crush on you. And let's be honest, that crush has not gone away. If he still is spending all this time with you and he's getting a free hug from you anytime he sees you, I can guarantee you that he probably still likes you. And I know from the boyfriend's perspective, eventually he's going to find out about this guy and he's going to see you giving him a hug every time he comes by. And that's probably going to be a big question mark in his head. Like, who is this guy and why are you hugging him? I thought I was the only guy that you wanted to be with. Like, that conversation is definitely going to come up. So if you really do want to try and keep this friend around, I would at least make the effort of broadening your friend group so that you can try and avoid just only having him as a friend. Because otherwise, I just don't think that this relationship is going to work out. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.